Hello, you're watching The Code Guy and in this one we're going to deal with JSON three different ways. At the start of the video I'm going to show you how to deal with JSON as a string, then I'm going to show you how to deal with JSON in files, and then in the final part of the video we'll talk about the most important, calling JSON from services and working with it. So what is JSON? JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. But don't get tied up, it was invented in JavaScript, but it's really used everywhere now as the main way of interchanging data between services. Ask any developer whether they prefer to deal with XML or JSON, and the answer will always be JSON. Okay, so let's get right down to it. Here I have a JSON string created, and what we want to do is work with this string. So to work with strings in JSON, the first thing we need to do is import the JSON package. There is another version of JSON called uJSON, but it's not part of the standard library, so you'd have to install it. The bonus is it's written completely in C, so it's faster, but for our purposes here, JSON's just fine. Okay, so how do we work with this JSON string? You'll see here we have customers and then a list of actual customers. You'd be forgiven for thinking this looks just like a Python dictionary, and it kind of is. The big difference here is we always use double quotes instead of single quotes, and if a value isn't known, instead of none, we'll use null. Okay, so how do we get this JSON into a format we can work with without cutting up strings? Well, very, very simple. We'll start off, we're going to create a customers object, and as I mentioned, JSON looks like dictionary, so it's going to be a dictionary type. And then to actually make that into something usable, we are going to do json.load s and then the string, which in this case is cust. And then let's just start out by printing customers. Run that now. And you'll see here we have a dictionary representation of this JSON payload. So how do we start using it? Well, it's just like a dictionary. So if we want to print out the name and occupation of everyone in our collection here, we can do for customer in customers, and we'll go to the customers list. And for each one of those, we're going to print format string. And then each part of our message is going to have customer name and customer occupation. And you'll see here, if we look at customers, this is our high level. So this is a list we're going to get returned. So we need to loop through it to get each of these. And then for each of these, we're looking for the name node and the occupation node. And if we run that, we now get Mary Poppins, she's a nanny, and Bruce Banner, who's a scientist. Now we can also add something to the dictionary. So here I have a dictionary prepared, and this is a children's TV character called Zippy, and he's a puppet. So how would we go about appending this to the list? Well, we start working with that dictionary again. And to do that, we can do customers, reference the list, which is customers. And then because it's a list, we can do dot append, and we're going to append our temp customer. And then if we print customers again, you'll see here at the end, we have Zippy. Okay, so how do I make that back into JSON? We're going to create a JSON payload, name of my variable anyway, and it's going to be a string, and it's going to equal JSON dot dump s customers. And we now print our JSON payload. And you'll see our payload is here. And it's got the double quotes again, and all of the nons from the top one should have been converted to nulls. And they have been. And you can see that zip is there. The way I like to think of these commands is load s is really loading a string into a JSON object. And then for dump, I like to think of it as dumping a dictionary back to a string. So load s and dump s, the s is a string. I don't know if that was the intention, but that's the way I like to think of that. It's all very well and good seeing this, but... It's not very well formatted. How can we format it? Well, json.dumps has a nice little argument called indent. And if we set that to four and run it, it will actually format our JSON with four per node. So here, first indentation is four, second indentation will be eight, and so on. So you can format JSON when you're working with it. Okay, that's how you deal with loading stuff from JSON to a string and vice versa. What happens now if we want to dump this to a file? To work with files is very, very similar. And if you want to know how to work with files in general, then check out my video on working with files. But first we create a context manager. So with open, and we're gonna call it json.txt. And we're gonna open the file for writing as JSON file. That's a context manager, we're now working with that file. And then to actually dump it to a file, we can do json.dump no s this time, and we are going to do customers, which is the object we're dumping. We then do json file, which is the file we are dumping to, 
And then we're going to do an indent of four to make it more readable. You'll see here there's no file called json.txt. And if we run it, there's now a json.txt, which has our data in. Can you guess how we get the data back out the file into our console? So to get the data from a file, we open our context manager like so, and then we're going to do temp equals json dot load. We're loading from a file, not a string this time, so there's no s, and we are going to read from json file. Now this has to be read instead of write this time, and then if we print temp, you'll see here we have our dictionary. Okay, so that is loading from strings and loading from files. This next piece is the most important. It's loading with services. There is no way you are ever going to be a developer in this world without ever calling a service. Here I have JSON service. It's very, very basic so far. And this is going to call an API that deals with dictionaries. This is a free API and I'll leave a link to it down in the description if you just want to copy it. So what we're doing here is we have a service URL and then we're asking the user to input the word they want to look up. I have imported some stuff already. The first one is our typing to do lists because this is going to be a list of something. We're then importing the JSON library and then we're importing something called requests. Requests isn't a part of the standard library so we're going to have to install that first and the way we do that is going to our terminal in PyCharm and do pip install request and you'll see that I've already got it there but if you haven't it will load it in. So the way we work with requests is very very simple. If we create a variable and we're going to call it JSON raw it's going to be a string and the way we work with requests is we call requests.get and that basically calls the get method of HTTP. And we are going to call the URL, so service URL, and we're going to append the word we want to search for. Now this returns several things. One of the things is the HTTP status code, but the other is a text node which contains the text that comes back from the request. So this will actually be our JSON. So just for space there, so pep stops whinging. So we can work with the data, we're going to do a JSON data and that is going to be a, a dictionary and that is going to be equal to json.loads. Again, we're working with string data, so loads is what we use and in there it's going to be JSON raw and then we can print JSON data. So the word we are going to look for is happy and you can see we've got all this JSON back from the service. So what are we going to look at first? Well, what are these URLs? Okay, audio. I'm guessing this is a... F oh, it actually says phonetic. So I'm guessing this is the phonetic pronunciation. Happy. You'll see we get the pronunciation. So first, let's expose that to the person calling it. And how do we do that? Well, if we have a look through this, you'll see we start off with a list. And I happen to know that both these lists seem to be pretty similar. So we're only going to deal with the first item in the list. So let's start off by defining our audio path. And that is going to be a string. And we are going to look at the first item in the list. So that will be JSON data zero. And then within that list, the first thing we want to look for is the key phonetics. And then in phonetics, it's also a list. So we're going to want to look at the first item in there as well. And then we're going to want to look for the dictionary key audio. And I need an equals there or it's not going to work. And then let's print audio path. Type in happy again. And we have an issue. Oh, capital P is the issue. Run that again. Happy. And there we get the audio link, which we can click. And PyCharm will open it in a browser and play it. Happy. And then the next thing I want to do is get some definitions and example uses from the actual payload. So we need to go back to printing our JSON data. And then we're going to need to find out where the meaning is. So again, it will be the first list. And then in here, there should be somewhere that says either definitional meaning I can't remember which ah, meanings so it's a list so let's start off by getting everything from meanings for meaning in and it's going to be JSON data first list meanings and then for each meaning in meanings we are going to print meaning go back to our word of happy and you'll now see there are four definitions and we want definition here. And do these have any example data? Oh yeah, there's an example. Music makes me feel happy. An example is where? It looks to be in the same list as definition. So let's grab the list definition and we're going to do for 
definition in meaning, definitions, print. And then we're going to try and grab a tuple containing the definition and the example. And in quotes, and let's run it. Right, word again, happy. And we have an issue. It can't find definitions. And that's because I've spelt it wrong twice. And it can't find example. We're off to a great start. Oh, some of these don't have examples, remember? So in here, it's not safe to do this. We need to do a get. And if there is no example to show, we're just going to print out the default of no example found. And if we print that now, hopefully, third time charm, there you go. We get these objects, a happy event, thing, person, etc. No example found. Now we're going to convert this to a list comprehension because it will be faster. The easiest way to do this is to take this, put that on the end and wrap it in brackets. And then we're going to take our definitions here as a tuple and put them at the beginning. And then so this is more readable, we'll just dump this onto multiple lines. And then we need to give this a name. Let's call it definitions. And it's going to be a list of tuples. And then I'm just going to clean this up some more. I like it. And hopefully that refactor didn't screw anything. Oh, that needs to be square brackets. Keep doing that. Why is PyCharm whinging? Oh, it's because the tuple isn't closed. So let's close the tuple. We closed the get, but not the tuple. And now everything looks good. And then we can loop over this to print it. So for definition example in definitions, we are going to do a print formatted and print the definition. And then we're going to print the example. And then just to make it more readable, we'll print a blank line underneath all of that. And actually, let's add a numbering system. Now, we can't use enumerate here because that would be a tuple of tuples. So we are going to do idx equals actually make it one because I want our first item to be one. And then each time we go through the loop, we are going to increase idx by one by using plus equals one. It's completely pointless adding an idx if we don't use it. So let's do idx like that. And there we go. We have our 10 definitions of happy. So a happy event, thing, person, etc. There's no example there. And our first example is here. And this is having a feeling arising from a consciousness of well-being or of enjoyment. Enjoying good of any kind, such as blah. Music makes me feel happy. So that is how you start to work out with a service. I actually call the service, get the data back. Once I get the data back, I'll then keep printing it, finding the areas that I need to pull, and then writing the code to pull them in. Now, some of this syntax is quite confusing at first glance, but it really means the first item in the list in JSON data within there get me the dictionary phonetics. That is a list to get me the first item and then get me the audio. So today we focused on JSON and how to use it within Python. But what if your object isn't a JSON type? then you've got to be able to deal with strings. And working with the string methods built in is only going to take you so far. For more than that, we really need to master regular expressions. The video top left will be all about that. So don't miss out. Subscribe and click the button so you know when I next publish. And with that, thank you for watching. And I hope to catch you on the next one.